Cancer.com here with Nasha Winters. Nasha, can you tell us a little bit about your, your practice, what you do? Yeah, so I, my name is Nasha, and I am an integrative naturopathic oncologist. And after years of running a, a really successful, busy, um, integrative practice, brick and mortar practice, um, I moved entirely into working 100% oncology in 2012. And in 2014, I sold my practice and started to move more into a consulting realm where I'm the person who does all the research for you or for your doctor, and I help um, you assess your terrain or your situation or your child's situation so that you can make the absolute best, most informed treatment decisions that match your biochemical individuality to choose the best routes to get you back to optimal health. Do you work with a good deal of children? Um, I do actually. I personally more consult with the families or the oncologists that are working with the kids these days. Yeah. Um, most of the kids I work with directly or over the age of 13. That's kind of my, my role because I want them to be engaged in the conversation because I'm asking them to do a lot. Right? I'm asking them to change the yeah. diet. I mean, you, I watch what you guys do. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit easier when the parents are kind of imposing upon them at a young age, but as they get a bit older, I want them to be inspired and motivated to make the changes you know, for themselves. So that's kind of the arena that I kind of, it becomes more of a dialogue between the kid, the, the teenager and myself versus yeah. the parents. And yeah. that seems to be very effective in helping inspire them. So a lot, of, a lot of kiddos, you know, with different leukemias and sarcomas and whatnot of the typical childhood um, cancer processes, these, they're motivated, in fact, often more so than their parents. <laughs> so, but I do, I have a lot of, um, I know that you were lucky enough to meet Dr. Nick Peters who is an integrative pediatric oncologist yes, here yeah. in Arizona, and I refer all my younger duds um, to him. And even the ones in the the, teen, the teenage, tween age years will end up usually working with him at some point because he's very amenable to working integratively. Yeah, no, I want to talk more to him. Yeah, yeah. Seems like a good, good, guy, to, good yeah. guy to know. Yeah. Um, so we're midway into hearing all about genetics and epigenetics yeah. as the uh, you know as the driving cause of cancer yeah. but then you also hear about you know uh, the mitochondria and the metabolism mm -hmm. and, and all this about no it's the the genetics are kind of downstream of the, of the metabolism and that's it mm -hmm. and then you also hear about you know the microbial aspect of things no it's really a viral infection or you know yeah. microbes inside the cells what did we hear about yesterday sulfate you know it's, yeah. it's really a broken do you fall mm -hmm. into any one particular camp in terms question. of you know what the primary upstream driver of all cancers is or is it completely situational dependent mm. if so you know are you doing any investigative work there to try to figure out what the what the actual cause or you know main driver might have been so on and so forth. Good. Well, first of all, that's a really good question because a lot of folks, where we get in trouble, I think, with oncology or any chronic illness is we try to find the one cause and effect, and that can really limit us. And there's a lot of people, it's, it's that, you know, that concept of the blind, the blind men all touching a part of the elephant and all have one component of it. So they're like, oh, I've got this trunk, but I don't know what this is and what is it a part of, or I have this tail or this foot. Um, that's what the oncology world has been like for the past 70 years. We've yeah. all taken a little piece, even among the integrative team. So here's how I think about it, okay? In fact, I've kind of coined, or my patients have coined this concept of the Terrain 10, because I don't ever, I mean, cancer is a, even American Cancer Society says that it's a collection of over 100 diseases. So if it's a collection of over 100 diseases, how can there be one single target or one agent to address that target. Yeah. So how I've kind of in 25 years of working with this for myself and with others, I've kind of come up with these 10 main patterns and then I assess those patterns to see what the priority is for that particular individual. So I'll give you a very brief overview. So how I personally see it is I see the canopy of a big tree. All right. Okay, I see that as the epigenetics. All right. Then the soil in which that canopy, um, that tree is growing out of is the microbiome. And then the trunk that's coming up out of that soil into the tree is the mind and the body, this you know, kind of the psychosocial, spiritual aspect that's very important. Yeah. And then the other seven or eight branches of that tree move into things like the inflammatory process, hormonal balance, dysglycemia, 
um, circadian rhythm issues, uh, angiogenesis, circulatory issues, and immune function. So that covers these sort of 10 qualities. So just thinking of it all as this huge ecosystem of a tree. I That's like that. It. Okay, good. Yeah. And it's very visual. So I show kids that concept. Yeah. We draw it and we're like, today we're going to be working on this part of your tree or this part of your tree. Do you have like a little infographic I of that do, or I do. And we're getting ready to put out. So I have a book coming out on this concept as well. The metabolic approach. Yeah, yeah. Metabolic yeah. approach to cancer. It's on pre-order right now. But we're going to dive in a little bit more to the details of that and how do you assess those 10 terrain issues and then whatever the priorities is where we'll start because all yeah. of us could probably work on all those components at any given time but as you had started with your question i really appreciate that you recognize the same priority is not going to be the same for your son or or me or anybody else you know, it's going yeah. to be a little bit different. There might be a lot of commonalities, but the priority where to start is what we start to explore. And so a lot of things, like I do look at the epigenetics, I do look at laboratory assessment, I do look at maybe where they grew up and what the environmental exposures were. I do look at mom and dad's health history, grandma and grandpa's health history. There's yeah. our epigenetics and yeah. our exposures yeah. as well. I look at mental emotional quality at home. You know, I look at what's going on on the playground. I mean, all the different things that can cause stressors in folks' lives. And then we, from the information we get back, it really shows us where to start and how to best support someone because it can be very overwhelming, <laughs> as you are well aware. It sure can. Yeah. And so we don't guess. Yeah. You know, we get a pretty clear, um, a pretty clear bullseye from the get-go. And I we like put it. together, after we do that full assessment as, as a consulting yeah. firm, we then give you what, you know, a lot of my patients have coined it their health Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can take that to whatever provider could offer the services, because we're not diagnosing or treating and we're not, um, um, you know, that, that role. But we do all the homework yeah. for the family or yeah. for the person and yeah. for the doctors so that they know, they can go in and say, hey, Dr. Winters and Optimal Terrain team, this is what we're seeing, run with it. I like and it. it gets a because it it's a very overwhelming process. Yeah. So we're trying to simplify it for everyone as well as educating at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. As far as particular treatments, mm -hmm. supplements, that sort of thing, is there anything you ever end up prescribing or recommending? A lot. You know, just yeah. across the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of regardless of all the. Um, yeah, pers personalizing factors. Totally. Well, I mean, ultimately, the fuel in the car is the most important, you know, or the fuel <laughs> into the soil of that tree. So, diet's big. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's a lot um, of uh, sort of mythology around diet as well. There isn't particularly a anti cancer diet. The common theme of all anti cancer diets are plant based, so a nice foundation of a lot of vegetables. And notice I don't say fruit and vegetables. Because the other side that's also dominant um, in the research especially is low glycemic. And so a lot of times we depend too much on fruit and other things initially, but sticking with the lower glycemic, the quality of our fruits and vegetables are key. They've got to be at least clean, you know, at least on the clean 15 or avoidance of the dirty dozen. I'm going to make you defend that in a podcast. Sure. Oh, uh, goodness, uh, I'm used uh, to Longer it. form podcast. Sure. Yeah. I can do that. I'm, I'm used to it because there's a lot. heard a lot, lot about, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. even high fruit diets, that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, Limited poly, on time here. It's, that's right. Yeah, the polyphenols and whatnot are, are what's key. So, but, you know, depending on, again, we look at your labs. We look yeah. at the, and if the labs are saying you have high sugar problems, that's going to be a driver for proliferation of cancer cells. So, I don't care what the dogma is around the diet, you got to get the sugar out of there, yeah. right? It's like yeah. those are going to be the things that are required. Now, as that improves, you could become more. You know, bring in more fruit, more starchy vegetables, bring back in the legumes and the grains, the quality grains, things like that. For me, across the board, I really get everyone on a gluten-free diet because the, the gluten of today is not what our grandparents had. Um, we've really changed it and it's altered. Um, I like to say it's not Jesus' wheat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. It isn't. Not yeah. even close. Yeah. I mean, we've got, it's just like a Frankenstein version of it. <laughs> so we've really altered that. We've altered our soil health. We've altered a lot of things. So um, that's a biggie. So I kind of think, again, plant-based, low glycemic, those are kind of things. And then I'll tweak the diet depending on the person, the situation, their lab. So sometimes it'll be ketogenic. Sometimes it'll be um, more vegetarian. Sometimes it'll be more a little bit of fish. Or sometimes it'll be red meat, if, depending on the person. If they've got no iron and their IGF is good, not, I mean, you go to the individual. You don't yeah. go, hey, it's this diet or no way at all. 
And then another thing that I use a lot in my practice is mistletoe, um, Miscum Album Extract. And this is a 100-year-old therapy out of Germany, anthroposophical medicine, the Rudolf Steiner, um, Waldorf School kind of world of um, a, a rhythmic approach to restoring the rhythm in the body. And it also has the ability to uh, improve uh, quality of life, help with side effects of conventional treatment, lower angiogenesis, induce apoptosis, and absolutely immunomodulate. So it's a very effective way to hit a lot of targets all at once um, on that tree that we were talking about in the beginning. So what I was looking for is the most, most bang for your buck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. simple. We were talking yesterday, you know, most this therapy is typically given in an injection form, a subcutaneous, yeah. um, 45 degree injection form several times a week or in an intravenous form in really aggressive situations, we'll do that. But with little ones, we've even found success with nebulizing or even the sips of it. Yeah, you nice talked approach. about that yesterday. Yeah. I want to yeah. look more into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, last question. Okay. If you had to boil everything you knew, Oof. everything you know, down into three golden rules on staying, on how to stay mm -hmm. healthy and disease-free, what would those rules be? Mine are simple. Okay, a lot of people think I'm going to tell you a thing or a treatment. Yeah. So, number one, for what are you grateful? Okay. Like it. Number two, what brings you joy? And go to that often. And number three, what is your purpose? Heard a lot about purpose lately. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can put all the best fuel in the car, you can put all the best treatments, you can put all the best diet, you can put all the best lifestyle and exercise, but if you don't have gratitude and you don't have joy and you don't have purpose, there's no reason to carry this container around any longer. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Ryan and Naisha Winters. Thanks. Look her up. It sounds like she's got a lot to offer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good luck out there.